I want to get into my favorite hack in the book, and this is including vinegar either before, during, or after a meal. This one is just something people can do right away, mm. and it's very cost-effective, and it has a profound effect on, on blood sugar. So talk about what type of vinegar and the nuances of applying that. Yeah, so the science shows us the following. If before a meal you have a tall glass of water with a tablespoon of vinegar in it, it can be any vinegar, but avoid the sort of very sweet balsamics because those have leftover sugars, so it kind of defeats the purpose. If you do that before a meal, you curb the glucose spike of that meal by up to 30%. And this is really cool because you're still eating the same meal as usual, but you're reducing the glucose spike. So you're reducing the side effects on your health, on your short-term and long-term health, on how you feel and how your body is doing. Very simple, very easy. And uh, in the studies, you know, it shows that it's even helping people with type 2 diabetes put their diabetes into remission. It's helping people lose weight. It's helping small studies, but it's helping women with polycystic ovarian syndrome reduce their testosterone levels and get their period back. So super effective, really. And especially if you suffer from cravings, having this, this vinegar drink before eating something sweet is very, very helpful. And I noticed in the book, you emphasize having it in a tall glass of water. Is yeah. that part important or can you just have a shot of apple cider vinegar? So it's best to dilute it. And actually, it's even best to use a straw if you can, just to help your teeth. From a biological standpoint, the shot would work the same, but it's it's just you know, those precautions are quite helpful still. I always dilute it just to be cautious. I don't want to hurt my my enamel. So the recommendation is about a tablespoon. People can work yeah. up to that over time. Exactly. Is this something you're doing each and every meal? Or is this something you'll do just when you're having a lot of glucose in a meal? You know, it's kind of the same thing as all, all the other hacks. I do most of them all the time because I just feel better. So there's no reason not to do them. For the vinegar one, I'm actually, I just finished a vinegar drink. Um, and I, you know, it's, it wasn't before a meal. It was just because I was home and I thought, oh, what drink could I have before the podcast? And it just felt like a nice thing to have anytime during the day is going to be helpful. So even in the studies that they show people just doing the vinegar drink first thing in the morning, it's also helpful. The most helpful time is before a meal, but anytime you can incorporate it is fine. The other thing that jumps out at me when considering having a big glass of water with vinegar is diluting stomach acid and enzymes. Is this something you came across in your research? Because a lot of people recommend not having any beverages when you're eating to make sure to keep your digestion stoked and, and working its best. So does the research show that it's impacted at all by having that big glass of water? That's really interesting. You know, it's funny you should mention this because just today I was starting to look at these studies on drinking during meals and I don't have the answer yet. I have to look into it, but it's definitely very intriguing to me. That'll be my next area of research. I'll report back. Okay, great. No, it just, as I'm reading that and we're discussing here, it comes to my mind because that's always been something I've been conscious about. Not that I totally avoid drinking when I'm eating, but I'm aware and I don't just chug back a ton of water. So again, that comes back to the shot that we talked about earlier and how you yeah. recommend putting it's with the water because for we now. We also know, for example, that if you're dehydrated, you're going to spike more. Um, but yet you're saying that we should not drink during meals too much. So it's like, oh, you know, when do I drink? <laughs> but I guess, I guess the solution is like drink between meals, make sure you're hydrated. And um, I, I would assume that just a glass of water would not make such a massive difference to your digestive enzymes, but I could be wrong. I would assume you don't want to chug like glasses and glasses and glasses, but maybe just a vinegar drink would be helpful. Well, I'm going to be curious to hear what you come up with because yeah, this could be another know. one of those myths that you debunk, totally. like the uh, carbs, having them at the end of the meal where people think, you know, you got to have them at the beginning or you get that gut rot, which you've debunked. So maybe this will be another one of those. Yes, sir. <laughs> You're on it. So another one we can get into. And the great thing about all these hacks is that they're inexpensive, easy to perform. We can begin today and, and apply them. And what you're alluding to is that you can stack them on each other as well. So it's not like, okay, I'm going to do the apple cider vinegar for this meal by itself. It's like, yeah. okay, you can get the order of what you're eating, plus the, the vinegar, plus what I want to talk about right now, exercising after the meal mm -hmm. and stack them together to get exponential benefits. 
Yeah, you really use them as tools in your toolbox. You know, it's um, these are principles based on how your biochemistry works, and they should become your friends, and you can use them whenever whenever it makes sense. So the walking after meals thing, it's quite simple. So after a meal, if you use your muscles for ten minutes. This can be walking, this can be dancing in your living room, it can be folding your laundry, cleaning your apartment, whatever. Doing this will help reduce the glucose spike of the meal you just had. And that's because as your muscles contract, they need glucose, they need glucose to do that, to, to get energy. And the first place they're going to look for this energy is in your bloodstream. And after you've just had a meal, and let's say that meal was going to create a big glucose spike, as the glucose gets into your blood... If you use your muscles, they're going to soak it up, therefore reducing the concentration in your blood, therefore reducing the glucose spike. So if somebody's going to be going out for a dinner and they're going to be with friends, they know they're going to be having some glucose, some starches or, or sugars at that meal, but they're not going to be able to go for a walk afterwards. Can they go for a walk beforehand or do some kind of exercise beforehand to still get that benefit? You can exercise at any time during the day is always going to be beneficial. But yes, actually, you can do it before as well. It's not as effective in the studies. They show that after the meal is better. But yeah, before is also very helpful because then you're making your muscles hungrier and whatever glucose you give them will be absorbed a bit faster too. Another one of the hacks that ties into some of the other ones we discussed is having greens at the beginning of your meal, mm -hmm. which again ties into the order thing, having your vegetables yeah. at the beginning. But why specifically greens before you have anything else? Well, because of the fiber, because vegetables, and it can be any kind of vegetable, by the way, I call it a green starter because it's just easier to remember, but it can be any type of vegetables at the beginning of your meal. Again, because the fiber in them, when it lands first in your stomach, coats your intestine. And so you reduce the glucose spike of the meal afterwards. You feel full for, for, for longer, fewer of the glucose and fructose molecules even make it into your bloodstream. Overall, it really, really helps you with your energy levels, reducing cravings for the rest of the day. It's super powerful. And I do that all the time. Like I cannot even envision a meal without a green starter or a vegetable starter at the beginning because I just feel so much better when I do it. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. 90% of the population has glucose spikes every day without knowing it. And so I dove into the research and I discovered that actually... There were things I could do, principles I could use.